Right, questions for Coach Johnson? Go ahead. Okay. It uh, it had been almost a year since you guys played a real game. What was your sense of just kind of the team's emotional state as as the as the game was approaching and got underway? Yeah, 344 days to be exact. Um, pretty crazy. Um, you know, it was it was really cool. I mean, it, it was interesting. The second the other team showed up in the other dugout, you could kind of see them all look over there and they were like, hey, that, that finally, you know, somebody else we get to compete. And I think, um, you know, it's been a rough road, you know, relative to all the COVID stuff with having a good team last year and getting that stopped and uncertainty for a lot of guys. So just to get back to competing, um, it's in itself was a win today. And, you know, our administration, um, medical team, uh, have done a great job. The players have done a great job with the COVID stuff and, and it shows and, and demonstrates how much being on this field and competing means to them. So, um, very, a lot of excitement and, um, you know, I'm very happy for them because it's, this is very meaningful to them. Okay, we noticed uh, you yeah. kept the uh, hitters on the field after the game. Uh, was it as strong as the, the pitching looked? Were you just wanting to re-emphasize to them about what happened in the game? Or what, what, what were you talking about there? Well, there's a saying that, that we have. We want every day to be opening day because in opening day, everybody is zero for zero. And in life, as well as baseball, uh, there's always an event, um, successful or failure. What's important is your response because the response is going to determine the outcome. And so we have good players that, um, you know, there's a lot of emotions, you know, going on out there today. So just kind of getting centered. We could talk about mental game. We could do breathing. We could do visualization. Um, none of that's going to replicate being back in competition. And some of these guys, this was their first crack at this. And, you know, going from high school baseball to – Division one baseball at this level is the biggest jump a player ever makes in their career. And these guys did it without a high school season and without a summer, um, you know, to add to their preparation. So we're just going to get better. I have no concerns there. I mean, we walked a ton tonight. It's a big part of our offense. Uh, the older players settled in and took enough good at bats for us uh, to be successful. And, you know, for as many games as we've won 14 to 10 and stuff like that, it's sure nice to win a ball game three zero. You, uh, you put a lot of emphasis over the last several years on building up the pitching staff. And in the first game this season, a shutout. Is that what you were looking for? Yeah, I'll take, <laughs> uh, they, can't win. they can't win if they don't score. So, um, you know, it was great. Chase, um, I thought was really good. I mean, especially when he stayed within himself. I mean, he really executed. I thought he showed really good poise. If a pitch ever got away from him, it seemed like the next one was right back where we want it to go. I mean, you know, no matter what your age is coming in with the bases loaded in the first game of the season. Um, that, that was awesome by Preston to come in and get that strikeout right there. And then Ian and, and Vince just doing their job. I mean, they're all seasoned guys and they all did a great job of just doing their job. What did Preston throw three straight sliders in that sequence? Yep. Yeah. Okay. The, the scouts behind the, the plate, um, is that something that chase, does he notice that? Do you talk um, about that at all? Do you yeah, tell I mean, him to just he, ignore he, it? He had a chance to be a top five round pick last year. And so he went through that all of last year. I know he played in the area code games in high school where at that event, there's, you know, 300 plus professional baseball and high level baseball people. So that's not remotely new for him. Um, I was sure proud of the way he competed. Um, I was sure proud of, of the maturity he showed and the poise he showed and, um, you know, that's what I've been optimistic about with him this entire time. Just, you know, a few more people got to see that tonight. So Jay, you mentioned the walks and that's the great patience. Uh, you mentioned, you... Go ahead. Yeah, I was, was going to say, ahead, you, ahead, you mentioned the patience that they, you mentioned the patience with the nine walks drawn tonight. You know, it was the first game uh, from almost in almost a year. What does that say from the team, from the lineup that you saw tonight? Well, really good hitters uh, don't swing at balls. I mean, and that's a big separator for um, average players and, and great players. And it's something that we really try to work on and whatnot. And and I thought we did a decent job, but we got to get better because some guys uh, submarine their own at bats by just 
swinging at everything and we'll get that taken care of in early work tomorrow. Brian, you're on mute, I think. Sorry about that, Jay. Yeah, what I was gonna say is uh, with the patience that you had in that respect, but then to go two for 11 with runners in scoring position, things like that, you think that maybe some first game jitters of the, the, the overabundance of opportunities led to maybe someone swinging at a pitch they shouldn't have and getting weak contact or? No, I don't see that. I mean, at Weatherly's 93 miles an hour. So, I mean, you guys don't know it because you don't follow college baseball <laughs> prospects, but I got a pretty good idea and it's not getting any easier the next two days. I'll tell you that. Um, this is a legit pitching staff. Uh, Ty Johnson, the guy that was in there at the end is projected to be the Mac freshman of the year. And then, um, you know, tomorrow, Chase McDermott, high uh, draft prospect. And then John Baker on Sunday is, you know, one of the best pitchers in the history of Ball State in the MAC conference. So um, we're going to have to get better. Um, I think uh, relative to your question, we had him on the ropes there in the third inning, like where we could have really blown the game open. And, uh, you know, Jacob tried to make a play, get in the second. But if he just stays there, we're first and third with one out and Brandon and Ryan coming up where it very quickly could have been five to nothing right there. I'm not going to ever take away a player's aggressiveness, especially somebody like Jacob, because that fuels our team with energy. But if we just stay put right there at first base, I think, I think the score is much different and um, it, relative to uh, what we need to do. I mean, every day is about improvement for us and we'll, we're going to get some guys here at one o'clock tomorrow and get back to work. So that was more of an instinct play. He he read it and thought that that would be the opportunity. Yeah, I mean, he just he did a good job. He read that the guy got camped underneath it. It's a big field out there, obviously. And, um, you know, good play by the outfielder to go to second base right there. We're trying to get Dante to third with one out because there's a number of ways you can score. Mm -hmm. And then he just wanted to go for it. And that's one of the things I love about him. He's grown into a player that, that wants to go for it. So, um, you know, it was... I, I just think the game changes right there significantly if we're hitting with first and third and one out and, and we settle in a little bit better. Certainly. The, the play where um, the guy tripled to center and then you guys appealed to second base, what's the genesis of that play? How do, how do you, who, well, the, you know, the, who notices he, it? And yeah, the, it. Uh, Brandon at first, um, you know, it's, if it's an extra base hit, it's kind of his job to watch it first as well as the dugout because we're right there. And then, at second, um, it's Brandon because he's trailing the runner because the uh, the middle guys are out for a double cut, and then uh, the dugout picked it up and as coaches we alerted it and um, pretty awesome. That was as a smart guy play as we call it. So good job of our guys being engaged into the game. Okay, thank you everybody. Thanks guys. See you tomorrow. All right, questions for Chase Silseth. Go ahead. Chase. How are you? I'm, I'm doing fine. How are you? Very good. Very good. How would you describe your nerves uh, during your your first appearance as a, as a Wildcat? Uh, it's, it's awesome. Um, you know, just I was just dreaming to play here. Um, and then just on opening night, you know, a little difference with all the COVID, but still butterflies and everything, just the team. It still was awesome. It was an awesome moment, um, you know. I remember watching an open night uh, game, or not opening night, but a Friday night game when my brother was at University of Utah a couple years ago. And, you know, Friday nights here at High C, even without the fans, is just awesome. Awesome. So are you aware of the presence of the scouts behind the plate? And does that affect you in, in any shape or form? Um, no, uh, I, try, I try not to let it. I'm aware, um, but I try to block that out. You know, I try to block anything out between the white lines out. You know, it's just me and the hitter at that point. Um, and then my teammates behind me, you know, just trying to compete behind them, uh, try to block out anything out, um, even the dugout on that side. Uh, just trying to stay with my team, me and my catcher, me and Coach Esky, and, you know, me and the teammates. So, and then just compete for them. How would you assess your performance tonight? Um, I'd say I'd say very good. You know, a lot of them defense made a lot of plays. I could have made some more pitches uh, to be to take myself out of some trouble. Um, Preston Price, how about that? Just bases loaded, jam him coming out. That's that's what that's what it's about here. And him having my back, and that's what that's what we are. This pitching staff's a family, and you know, a sh first shutout, 
is awesome. And there's many more to come because we have each other's back here. Sure. Were you getting a little bit tired in that inning or did you just lose your command a little bit, hit a couple guys? Um, you know, I kind of, kind of felt a little tired, you know, you know, going deep in the first games and uh, in the beginning, you know, fatigue kind of definitely sets in, but you know, you just got to compete, you know, just try. Um, so I'm, I'm always going to be trying to attack in the zone, no matter if I'm tired or not, and, you know, when mechanics kind of get off a little bit, you just got to, got to try to stay composed, but got away from me there a little bit. And, um, but you know, we, we got to win. So. So you throw a fastball slider, change up curveball also? Yes. All four of those. All four of those. Okay. And what did you use primarily tonight? Did you say? Uh, we kind of attacked with the slider uh, for strikeout pitch uh, for curveball to get ahead. Uh, curveball was more hitting the zone tonight uh, to get early in the count, but then the slider was the put away pitch. Um, usually the changeup's really good, but we didn't kind of use it that much tonight um, because there's kind of their swings that they kind of had. Uh, they were late on it, so we didn't want to speed up their bats anyway. Um, but, you know, mostly the slider. Is there uh... – any, any story behind deciding to uh, cut your flow? Uh, you know, just kind of, you know, I just kind of was thinking, kind of getting tired of it a little bit, kind of got irritating a little bit. But, you know, I mean, I did regret it when I first cut it off. But, you know, me and Coach Jesse kind of just have talked all through fall of this. He's like, you know, just kind of hinting towards, you know, cutting the hair a little bit. But, you know, he's, he, gave it, he gave it to my – he gave the decision to me if I was going to cut it or not, so – um, and then I just kind of decided, you know, it's been um, it's time to cut it. New new year, and let's let's get it going again. So that's that's the kind of no superstitions or anything. It. No superstitions. No superstitions at all. It it to me in my mindset, um, I could have long hair, short hair, you know, long sleeves, short sleeves, whatever. Just you know, just kind of go out there. That's all mental. Uh, mental stuff so just if I could stay attacked with the attack mindset and we'll, we'll be good so I heard that during um conditioning drills in the offseason you pretty regularly finish first among the pitchers um is that just your competitive nature well, how do you how do you uh, account for your performances and your desire to to win those conditioning drills um, you know, it's just all about competitive. I'm a very competitive guy. I want to win in everything. Um, you know, even some of those times when you're pushing, pushing yourself, it wants to push others to kind of, you know, be, be right, right behind you. And, you know, towards the end of the, uh, under this, end of this spring, um, there's some players even coming and telling me like, you know, when I'm going, he's like, no, I'm not letting you beat me anymore and stuff like that. So just kind of, you know, trying to be a leader in that instance, um, you know, to push other guys. Uh, is one of those things, but also just peer, when we're doing that stuff, peer competitive to come out. I'm a very competitive man, um, you know, because I hate, I hate losing more than I do winning. And uh, that's probably, it's probably what comes out, but I'll definitely just competitive nature. And then, you know, wanting to be an example a leader to kind of push other people. What does it mean for the pitching staff to throw a shutout in the first game? I mean, Jay has, been trying to build up that side of the team for years and for you guys to come out and set the tone in this way. What, what does that say about what this pitching staff is capable of? I mean, opening night to come out and shut out. I mean, I don't care what team it is, UCLA or whatever. If we come out and just throw a shutout first game, it just mean, it means a lot. Um, it's it's a definitely a momentum uh, momentum grabber. And it just goes to show how we did the shutout today. Um, in the sixth inning there, base is loaded. Two outs, Preston comes in, slider. Three straight sliders to get us out of a jam. So, you know, this, this staff is all about having each other's backs. And this year is going to be, be like that. This is a family. Coach Eski does a good job of, you know, preaching that, coming together, especially with no fans, you know, out there is – we're all we got. So we got to make sure to kind of back each other up and to go out there to do that, just going to show that. And, you know, people, people say, you know, Arizona's had a struggle with pitching staff, but I say that's a pretty good stamp right there. All right. Thank you, everybody. All right. Questions for Ryan Holgate. Go ahead.
Uh, Ryan, you guys had not played a real game in almost a year. What did it feel like to, to finally get back out there? Yeah, it felt great. Um, I think being able to have this ball and be able to do a ton of work then is just was major for us, especially because we have like a whole new team. It kind of feels like this year. So um, just being able to be together then and just, just kind of work up to now, it's, it's been good. Sure. Would you say the team was excited? Was there a sense of nervousness? What, what was it like being around the team, being in the dugout in the moments leading up to the game? Yeah. So, I mean, like opening day, like the nerves are always going to be going, but I think uh, for the most part, most guys use it in a good way and uh, use it to their benefit. So um, I think it's good to just kind of like not throw those away and ignore them, but just kind of use them to your advantage. So that's good. But um, yeah, as, as time goes on, guys will settle down. It's just, it's a hard game and um, kind of getting back into it. So yeah. What did you think about the pitching staff's performance tonight? Oh, it's awesome. Like Sosa's doing great. Um, he's been great ever since he stepped foot here. And it was just kind of seeing the guys come out of the pen. It kind of made me smile just because it's like we're super confident in them now and we know what they can do and they've been great. It's just awesome. We've been hearing about Chase Silseth ever since he got here. What makes him so hard to hit? Yeah, I mean, he just he mixes really well. He can locate the zone and throws really hard. So he's uh, he's got some good stuff. Sure. And you mentioned how you're confident in the bullpen guys. Preston and Vince kind of established that last year. What's the sense when either one of those guys comes in the game? Yeah, I mean, they they kind of have one job and it's just to come in and get guys out and they, they've been working a really long time to do it and um, they're older and experienced. So it's definitely gonna um, start paying off and they're just doing a great job. So I hope they continue to do that and they will. What was the message that Jay was trying to get across to the hitters? in that little supplementary meeting there after the game? Yeah, so, I mean, we kind of just live by uh, just our sticking to our approach and um, maybe we swung a little more balls than we should, but um, kind of overall what that was, it wasn't anything baseball wise. It was kind of just telling us to relax and just kind of have fun. It's just another game. So, like I said earlier with the nerves on opening day, it is what it is for everybody, every kind of baseball player. But yeah, I think it's, it's going to be really good. Can you walk us through your at bat in the first inning? Yeah, so I mean, um, I got, I think he got ahead. I don't even remember, but I think he got down two strikes. And um, what we do here with two strikes is we just get on the plate and uh, hit anything that's going to cross the plate and put it in place. So I was just kind of trying to get hit a ball hard. Sure. And the fly out to right, did you feel like you maybe just missed that one, got under it a hair? Yeah, I got under it a little bit. I'll get on top of that soon. <laughs> um, well, how does it feel to win a game three to nothing? I mean, you guys have. Um, had a great offense here for a long time, but Jay's been trying to build up the pitching side of it because he knows that, you know, you're going to need that to go a long way in, in the postseason um, should you reach it. Um, do, do you like this idea of you know, winning a game like this as opposed to, you know, 14 to 10 or, or what have you? Yeah, I feel like this year there's definitely going to be a lot of close games just because I, I just know that our staff is, is going to battle, our hitters are going to battle, and there's a lot of great competition out there. So, I mean, overall, whatever we can do to win, whether it's 1-0, 13 to 10, but I think uh, this year our offense is going to do the job and our pitchers are going to keep the runs a little lower. So, um, yeah. I assume you're not going to be the DH every single game. You're going to play in right field sometimes, but what is it like to, to, to be a DH? Is it difficult? No, yeah, it's just kind of like, I'm going to do whatever I can to help the team. And if uh, that's my role for the day, it's my role for the day. If I'm in right, I'm in right. But um, either way, I'm just going to stick with the plan and approach that we uh, work on pretty much every single day here and just um, get excited for my teammates and keep building off of the success. Do you do anything in between plate appearances to keep yourself loose or active or involved? Yeah, I just, I kind of just go around the dugout, talk to my teammates, uh, try to keep the energy up for the pitchers because um, they know we're right behind them when they hear that we're right behind them. Um, I think it, it does a good job. Sure. And this is your first game against an opponent. You can kind of hear, we're up here in the press box and we can hear everything that everyone's saying. Could you, could you pick up anything during the course of the game? There be some things that the other um, dugout was saying, or what was the atmosphere like, I guess? Um, yeah, I mean, I think just kind of not having fans, it's something that um, isn't going to really affect us because, I mean, we've been inter-squatting this whole time with without fans, and uh, we're just here to play baseball, and we wish the fans were there. We love the fans, but um, for right now, we're just going to have to play our game and um, hope we can see them soon. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.